sorrows guide us. Did you want something? As the Lilithid powers were developing, what do you make of them? On one hand, they seem useful. But on the other hand, or perhaps- Why is this staring disapproves of me talking to her? We know where they're coming from. And what lies at the end of that path. I never expected Ceramorphosis to be tempting. I think we should resist these powers. There's simply too many unknowns for us to risk it. The odds are stuck against us. Can we truly afford to ignore potential advantage? Well... Perhaps you have a point. <laughs> Fine. Let's explore these powers then. I just hope we don't come to regret it. <clears throat> Oh my god, it's my guardian. He's here. I promised I'd be back. Oh my god, daddy, please. <laughs> Don't worry. I have things under control. For now. <sighs> you haven't been using the parasite's power. You think you don't need it. But things haven't gone as you expected. You hoped a druid as powerful as Holton might be able to remove your tadpole. But he couldn't. You're desperate to be rid of it. Understandable. But you're looking for solutions in the wrong places. Halzen mentioned that these tadpoles have been modified with magic. Yes. Holsin is correct. Your parasite is unusual. It is wrapped in magic that prevents its removal. Until the source of the tadpole's magic is destroyed, any attempt to remove it will kill you. You were lucky that Holson knew this. His instincts are right. The parasites were merely a symptom of a greater sickness in Faerun. What is the sickness? The absolute aims are not yet clear to me. But its progress towards domination is clear. These parasites are more than illithid spawn. They are vessels for control. The infected hear the voice of the Absolute and believe it to be a god. That is how the cult of the Absolute is spreading. The highest of their rank, the True Souls, carry a tadpole just like yours. Hmm. It is how they receive their orders. It is what makes them obey. When the order to transform is given, it will not be a matter of days. They will be mind flayers in an instant. Were it not for my protection, so would you. How is it that you protect me? I have powers of my own. Unique powers. But know that we are alike. Just like you, I was infected with a mind flayer parasite. Just like you, I seek to be free of it. I've been trying to escape from this evil for a long time. Once, I almost succeeded. Now, through you, I've been given a new chance. You can go where I cannot, and I can protect you from that evil. If we work together, we may turn this around. Hells, they need me. I have to go. No! Tell me where I can find you. No. It isn't safe. The power I used to protect you. I stole it from someone. <laughs> they want it back. I will hold them off for as long as I can. But sooner or later, I will be worn down. You must discover the source of the magic that controls the parasites before that happens. The cultists are gathering. At Moonrise Towers. We need to go to Moonrise Towers. Use the powers your parasite gives you to convince them you are one of them. And when you find the source of their magic, destroy it. Go. Our freedom depends on it. <sighs> okay, Father. Transforming into a mind flare might have its perks. At least then I could float over this ugh, muck. Not one for roughing it, I see. <laughs> Wallowing in filth is for pigs and children, my dear. Pigs, children, and people with a little bit of grit. Yep, thought so. 
Everything is a fucking illusion in the Fey world, god damn it. Fuck. Oh! That's not good! I don't wanna be here! I don't like the Fey realm! <laughs> I don't wanna go here! She must be a witch. You are as thick as they come, sweetness. This is my personal playhouse, and you don't have an invite. Get out! Do I want to know where Marina is? I do need her, apparently. Has that wriggler eaten your brain already? Leave. Or you'll end up in tonight's stew. It'll go nicely with Marina. Yeah. She's already marinating. Don't look. Yeah. Don't. No. No. Don't look. Mustn't look. Mustn't see. I see it. I see what's to come. Me. Dead. Dead. Flesh rotten. Bones shining. Can't stop. Can't. Gods. Don't hurt me. Oh, please. Please. Please, please, please. Stop. Trick, 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 they're the monster, monster, oh, mind dripping, flesh peeling, mind flayer. Oh? Mind flayer, get away, get away. Clearly has no idea what he's talking about. Stop, please, please. Oh. You feel crushing waves of fear as the presence within the door recoils. It can't let people through, not again. What happened last time you opened? Images flash. A man cowering, a bag open at his feet. Gold coins spilling onto the floor. His cries for mercy are cut short as the hag slices into him, dismembering him painstakingly, limb by limb. She cackles. The man's remaining flesh, twisted and contorted, becoming the twisted surface of the door before you. He's the door. Flee, you feel it cry. A scene appears in your mind. Two paladins and a cleric marching through the door, shrouded in the glow of the divine. Weapons brandished, they charge into the hag's lair. Screams of terror pierce the air. You let them in? Nobody. That's a decade for each. You're mine for 30 more years, Pekka. You see an image of blue skies and sunshine as the door shudders a warning. Run. Its form flickers, and you realize that the door is transparent. Mm. If I kill the hag, you'll be free. You see the hag. She walks through the door, its form shimmering. The lightest touch of hope brushes your mind as the presence within retreats. Stop. Please. Please. You see the hag, eyes bright with glee as she sets fire to the door. With a jerk, you're pulled from the vision. The presence within shrinks, begging you not to run through it. Protection from evil and good actually works. Traps. How considerate. Dude, I walked around it! How did I get the damage? You come to my home, interfere in my business, and now have the gall to face me in the heart of my lair. You petulant bollocks! I'll rip your spine out your asshole! I'll use your blood to spice my stew! I'll keep you alive until I've sucked the marrow from your bones! I'll bring you back and do it all over again. Just get out of here, please. You want the girl so bad. Fuck. 
Oh, that's gonna help. Wait! Ah! Oh, wait just a tick! Killing me is a waste of time. I'll find a way to return. Always have, always will. But it's unpleasant. So how about we be civilized about this? Mm -hmm. I have something you want. Ha, huh, this should be good. If you're gloating now, just wait till you hear my offer, Petal. Let me leave with the girl and I'll give you power. You want uh, to be stronger, tougher, smarter, done. Anything is possible. Just let me keep the girl and her babe. No, please. She's dreaming if she thinks we'd leave Marina here. It's your choice, sweetness. Fine. Have it your way. I'll rip your throat out yet, you little Bollocks. Okay, she didn't kill me. You I'm just busted. You ruined it. You ruined everything. What? <laughs> That's an interesting way of thanking me. You want thanks? A slap is all you deserve. What? Ethel was going to bring my husband back. Oh no, it's not one of those. Back from the dead. Not this again. And now I'll never see him again. Oh god, not because this again. Because of you. Oh. What did you promise this. her? The baby. Just a bit longer and my child would have been born. And all this, all this would have been over. With hags, nothing is over. This was the best chance I had. For me and my baby. Auntie Ethel promised to give this child a good life. Teach them magic, even. You're an idiot. More than I could have done. Oh, poor girl. Don't sell yourself short. You can raise the child. I always wanted to be a mother. I just never thought I'd do it alone. Now I'll have to drag Connor's coffin all the way home. Oh, Connor it's is the, the one who's outside. Way this child will ever meet their father. I hope you're happy. Girl. Oh, that's so fucked up. Lead. You got your guts. Why did you want Marina? Didn't want the girl. Wanted her. Bay was going to. Eat it and make a hag daughter. Are you the only hag around here? Where there's people, there's hags. Okay. Where do you keep your value? What crumb? Good. What deal did you make with me, Rena? Brad's husband is. So sad. She wanted me to bring him back to life. Little fool thought it would fix everything. Why are you so cruel? Not me. That's cruel. It's people. They oh. want and want and want. I merely give. There? The spell's power wanes. You can ask no more questions. Well then. These things have stayed interesting. Go talk to her. Mm, I want to have a word. Gods, didn't hear you coming. I know I should head home, but I can't bring myself to leave. The thought of putting him in a wheelbarrow and making the journey all over again. I found a wand. I think I can resurrect your husband. I don't think I should resurrect her husband. Why not? Because there's a love exchange. If you bring something alive, 
you kill the other. You can't just resurrect something and not have something else die. So if I resurrect the husband, I might accidentally kill her or her babe. Okay, well, I saved, so let's see what happens if I do resurrect it. What? <laughs> Found a wand. What? You can. Let's see what we can do. You feel a surge of power from the wand. The air suddenly tastes acrid. It wants to be used. Bring it back. Bring Connor back. Poor Connor. Please. Oh, Connor. Another one towards the coffin. Let's see what happens. Not good. Nothing good is gonna happen. Oh god. Yeah, that's a mm, that's a zombie. Oh, Connor. What? What's happening? Why is he still dead? I mean, you wanted him back alive, so now you got a zombie husband. Oh lord. Oh lord. Wow. Oh god. Oh, it's so juicy. You feel something pull at you. The creature yearns for a master. Oh damn. This is awkward. <laughs> That's awkward. <laughs> Ma'am, I uh What have you done to him? I didn't mean to steal your husband. So the hag fulfills her promise. It can never be simple, can it? But oh, this isn't what she promised! I wanted him back! Back the way he was! Not this! This is your husband. Do you want him or not? Connor? Connor! <laughs> I don't even know if he's in there. But he might be. And if he is, I'll find him and bring him back. Oh God. Pocket the wand anyway. <laughs> you got your husband. Have fun with you that. You bastard! Give him back! I thought you were going to hell! <laughs> I thought... I I mean, Connor, we can just put a little bit of, like, moisturizer on you. <gasps> Retinol! Retinol will fix him. Wait, is it gonna come with me? Wait, is it just floating mid-air? He's just- he's just there. He's just a little guy. He's just vibing. <laughs> Bye, Connor. Oh, damn. That- Wow, that's such a horrible way to die. Connor, I'm so sorry. <laughs> can we put him back into the- Can we put him back into the- <laughs> I don't want to disrespect him like that. Oh my god. If my great-grandfather would have seen what I do to the dead, he would be so mad. I wish I was this fucking flexible. Damn, look at that. Holy shit. God, tell me she's gone. Oh, please. She's dead. You're safe. They should burn in the nine hells. The hag. There's never been a more vile creature. The things she did to me. Why were you even here? I was a fool. I wanted to know my fate. I had a choice between two lives, and I was frightened of choosing wrong. I asked the hag to help me see what the future would hold. Mm. Got what I wished for, too. I saw my future self, a corpse, rotten with maggots, and everyone around me dead, putrid and dead. You mentioned choosing between two lives. What were they? A boring story. Stay or go. Marriage and kids, or a life of novelty. I lost my best years rather than just choose. Live while you can, and be careful. Yes. I will. Thank you. Fetid smell assaults your nostrils. Dead flesh lies below. A great deal of it. True. The warm rush of power flows through you. You feel stronger, faster, better. Huh. Oh, well. Damn. What are you wearing? One oh, horn! Shit. The stink of Avernus! Advocatus Diaboli! We'll all be gods damned. 
blade of frontiers. Thought I'd shaken you for good. That'll teach me to underestimate you. Karlak, the Archdevil Zeriel's gladiator. Come to burn the Sword Coast to ash. We got it all wrong, Will. Karlak not about to hurt anyone. Well, not counting the fuckers that need a good hurt. <laughs> Shut it, devil. I know your kind. A heart darker than a shadow's nightmares. You'd cut a child's throat just to taste the blood. A devil? I didn't take the blade for a fool. I'm... A great fire roars oh. through you. The fire of the first hell. You are Karlak, tearing through demons across a blood-red landscape of fire and volcanic cinder. The front lines of the blood war. With every swing of her axe, Karlak fulfills Mistress Zariel's purpose. Proof! Clear as summer sky. It's over, Karlak. It's time you feel the sting of the oh blade. Oh my god, Will, I chill! to tell you, I'm not what you think I am. Another vision. Karlak's blade rays slicing through devils, Zariel's servants, as her eyes dart around, seeking escape. Will shudders with Karlak's desperation. She is a victim of the Blood War, not an agent of it. By Baldurin's helm, I... No, I will not be tricked. You saw the truth. I may be an effective soldier, but I never wanted to serve Zariel. Legged it away from her the first chance I got. And yet you served. What? Sundown, you saw what I saw. Karlak is not a danger. No! Devils cannot be trusted! Oh, fuck off! Karlak's not a devil, and you know it. Would you listen to sense? This doesn't have to end badly for either of us. You know monsters better than anyone. Can't you look in my eyes and see I'm not a devil? You don't know what this means. You don't know what you're asking me to do. I'm asking you to live, Will. I don't want to hurt you. And to be frank, I'd rather not find out how the blade got his name. I swear to you, on all I am, I am not what you think. Shit! <laughs> Shit. <laughs> You really are no devil, are you? I've... I've been deceived. Oh, thank the gods. Thought I was gonna have to take your head. <laughs> <laughs> you would have died in the attempt. But there have been enough threats today. Truce then, eh? Aye. Truth. Thank you! I see the good in you, Karlak. God. I promise not to lose sight of it. Even when the hells burn hottest. Oh my god, Will. Literally was about to kill her, and for what? You've been witness to a pantomime, I'm sorry to say. And I've played my part all too poorly. Clearly. What's that supposed to mean? Play it out plainly, Will. It means that a reckoning's coming. And I'll be the one to pay up. One night soon, when we make camp, the veil will be lifted, and I'll pay my penance. Penance? Should I be worried? You're not in any danger. I promise. I can't say the same about me. Dude! I can't have you die. Glad Will saw sense. Even more glad he decided to stick around. It takes a pretty slick mover to track down old Karlak. Like you two could make peace. Same. Now, instead of a liability, I've got a friend. Oh. Or I will have Sue. Oh! Anyway. I love her! Ah! Oh, baby! I love her so much. Oh my god. Relax. Full rest. Full rest! Oh. Hell's fire. She's coming. Who's coming? Mommy? Will, you've been naughty, <laughs> and you know what happens when you're naughty. God damn it. Anyone but her. <laughs> well, well, aren't you a luscious thing? <laughs> you 
You flatterer. Why, if I had a warm heart, I'm sure it would be skipping. <laughs> Call me Mizora. I'm Will's patron. Oh! The fount of his power. My pet's been unruly, and his leash needs a yank. <laughs> we had a deal, Will. But Carlite's still breathing. Oh, I've taken man. more pleasant shits than you, Missouri. <laughs> and at least those can be buried after. That's no kind of talk for a lady. By the way, Carla, Zariel sends her regards. Oh, damn. You told me! Devils only! She's a tiefling, not a monster! How precious. The little pupsters found his bark. Oh my god. Clause G, section 9. Target shall be limited to the infernal, the demonic, the heartless, and the soulless. Karlak meets the criteria by virtue of having no heart. <gasps> That's why they took her heart? Don't you worry. That ship has long sailed the sticks. Good. But a defiant pup must still pay his price. Oh shit. To wit. Oh no, what is she gonna do to him? Oh poor boy. Oil burns in the fires of Avernus. The lightning storms of Dis strike his flesh. His soul passes through each layer of the hells, gaining their essence. And uh, well. She turned me into a demon? Oh, the very thing That's he hates. That's better. But wow, he's what so What the hard. hells have you done? A promise broken, a price paid. You know the terms. Get used to the new form, pet. There's no going back. Some magic even I can't undo. Damn. Now, let's see how the frontiers fare without their precious blade. Karlak, keep an eye on him, would you? I'll be keeping mine on you. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and Will, don't forget, our pact still stands. Ta-ta. <laughs> Mommy. <laughs> Oh no, poor Will. <laughs> Can I be her pet? <laughs> I'll be honest, soldier. I'm reeling. Will hardly knows me, but he chose my life over his. Oop. Been a long time since someone stuck their neck out for me like that. Poor girl. He's a good man. Maybe the best of us. You can say that again. When he was chasing me through a Vernus, I thought he was just another sad merc. How wrong I was. Gods damn her straight back to the hells. Just look at me. I did what was right. And Mazora made me pay for it. Oh my god. A demon I'd be hunting the top devils top. and demons, oh no. she said. Traitors and hypocrites. Heartless evils of all sorts, but not... Oh no. Not Zariel's victims. Not innocent tieflings. Warlock packs tend to be unforgiving from what you know of them. Will was lucky he didn't face a more severe punishment. True. What did you expect? She's a devil. Hardly the paragon of honesty. All these years. You'd think it's a lesson I'd have well learned. Yeah. It's Mizora who grants me the power to conjure armor and cast eldritch blasts. Hmm. Before I was infected, I could even call hell beasts and summon festering clouds. But I promise you, every thrust of my blade and every flame I sparked was for the good of the coast. What are the terms of your pact? I can't utter the terms or circumstances of the pact. I can tell you most all else, but the pact, I'm forbidden, unless Mazora permits it. Oh my god. But I'll say this. The moment I pacted myself to Mazora, I have not regretted for a heartbeat. Oh. It was my proudest deed. Really? It was worth the sacrifice. All I can give you on that is my solemn word. Well then. Uh, where is, where is Gale? Because he's probably dying again. There's peace to be found in the stillness as evening draws in. 
I used to while away many hours just like these with my companion. I'm in far comfier surrounds. She preferred it when we were alone. Curled up before a crackling hearth with some ancient esoteric tome between us. Ink glinting in the firelight. Stop talking about your ex-girlfriend. Are you... Are you talking about your cat? Fire! Geron's lost... <laughs> no! No! Tara is not any cat. She's a tressum. Given your confusion, I'm guessing you've never met one. <laughs> creatures. Fine company for any self-respecting wizard. She'd be proud to see me keeping such fine company. The saviour of those poor tieflings, no less. And I've given her precious little to be proud of recently. <laughs> After I was afflicted with my condition, I locked myself in my tower for an entire year. It was inconsolable. Wallowing in my self-inflicted tragedy. I've given up on myself. But Tara never did. It was her encouragement. Her research that led me to my treatment. Once we knew that magically infused items were the key, she went out to find them for me. She saved my life. It's one hell of a cat. She has a good heart. She would recognize the same in your actions here. I'm sure she'd approve of me lending myself to your efforts. She must be very smart to have done all that. Smart does her a disservice. She's a fine wizard in her own right, though somewhat held back by her lack of opposable thumbs. You remind me of her somewhat. There's a steeliness in you. An unwavering tenacity, even in the face of, to be frank, quite dire odds. Wish she were here for me to make a formal introduction. But I would never ask her to undertake such a journey. She's safer at home. Besides, she was always telling me I needed to spread my wings, so to speak. Find mortal friends instead of hanging onto Mistress coattails. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing. I hope. So I remind you of your pet. How romantic. I assure you, were you to meet Tara, you would see the comparison for the flattery <laughs> it is. But perhaps that's not a point worth laboring further. Suffice it to say, <sighs> I think rather a lot of you. And there aren't many on this plane who I'd give such high praise. <laughs> I'm flattered. Is your good opinion so hard to come by? One doesn't become the most powerful archmage in Waterdeep and lover to the goddess of magic uh. herself by having low standards. I assure you, when I tell someone they're wonderful, I mean it. And you are wonderful. Oh my god, stop. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Oh, uh, damn it, he's risen me. I'm not interested right now. Uh, I have Karlak and, and Assyrian and Jury Daddy. You have to riz everyone. I do need to riz everyone, so don't stop now. What else do you like about me? Were I to recite that list, I fear we'd be here at dusk tomorrow. Oh, wow. Many things, I assure you. But a conversation better saved for another time. With my condition as volatile as it is, I fear any undue... excitement may tip it over the edge. So he doesn't oh, fuck so he won't blow evening. up? Nothing better for the heart than a good night's rest. And mine is gladdened to know I'll have the pleasure of your company again come morning. God, he's so fucking smooth, bastard. Where's my little bottom? Where's my little kitty meow meow? There's my little kitty meow meow. A line with a fork and one, two, three dots. <clears throat> Bloody infernal. How was anyone meant to read this garbage? I'm a tea flying. It's easy for some of us. Uh, what are you doing? <laughs> Offering to help. I can tell you what it says if you want. I'm perfectly capable. Thank you. This isn't your concern. The well, I read looks pretty dangerous, but if you don't want to know. Nice. What? I. Well. <laughs> maybe you could have a look. <laughs> Let's go, kitty meow meow. Let's see what it says. The jagged script is definitely infernal, a language you know all too well. The lines describe oaths and the fires below, but the language is fragmented and strange. This is just a piece of a larger text. And? 
What does it say? Something about the fires below. It's just a fragment of Infernal Leg Legolas. It's not a poem. It might be part of a devil's pact. There once a claret of Grand who was cursed with a very small wand. <laughs> Terrible! Terrible! No! I'm not gonna fuck with him like that! Part of a devil's pact. Infernal pact? But not even the whole text. What was that bastard up to? If he did make a devil pact, he's more dangerous than we thought. More dangerous than you thought, perhaps. I never had any doubt. <laughs> but if this is part of a contract, it must be powerful. Or valuable. Or both. What have I run off with? Do you ever see Kazadar write in Infernal before? No. I could have missed it, of course, but I doubt it. Kazador was only figuratively hellish. There were never any devils hanging about the crypt. Whatever he's left carved in my flesh, it's a mystery to me. Th thank you, by the way. This is... well... It's something. We'll figure it out. I promise. Will we? How <laughs> sweet. Shut up, kitty meow meow. You know I got your back. 